Hello, and welcome to another episode of Bath Dan's Thoughts. We continue to do great jobs with this. Hashtag Celsius Jail to Netflix. Hashtag Cell Snyderverse to Netflix. And you know what? There's another project we need to talk about. Henry Cavill's Man of Tomorrow. Or that's what we'll call it. That's what the, the campaign has been. And I feel like... You know what? Superman's a pretty big topic. And I don't feel like it's right to do this by myself. So welcome to my brand new show. We will call it Bat Dance Discussions. This will be a new show I do where I will do longer form content discussing various topics with a guest. And since we're talking Superman today. Hey. <laughs> what up, my fellow Sith sympathizer? Hashtag <laughs> Obi-Wan gave up. Hashtag I stand with Anakin Skywalker. That's great. What's up, Bat Dan? How are we doing tonight, buddy? Great. Really, really happy to have you discuss this topic. Superman. <laughs> Right? I, I don't know why you picked me. I, I don't really know anything about Superman, so this is going to be, uh, yeah. Okay, no, that's true. I guess oh, I'll fake God. it until we make it. Let's talk, let's talk Superman. <laughs> oh, God, somebody save me. <laughs> oh. You, be, you, better, you better plug it in. You better plug it in now, Batman. <laughs> um, I don't have video clips loaded on my stream yet. But before we talk about this topic... I want to do a little bit of an advertisement. Have you heard of Dreamwalker? Hmm. Uh, yeah, Dreamwalker uh, sounds uh, very familiar, especially after this week. Yep. Ooh. For those of you who don't know, Super Bowl Corey and myself are being included on a comic book series called Dreamwalker, written by Mikey Sutton of Geekosity, who, guess what, is officially getting a live action series. Boom. Uh, absolutely I mean, amazing. I mean, just think about it, Corey. We're like, we are actually not only going to be characters in a comic book, we're, like versions of ourselves are going to be on a live action series. Like this is <laughs> like one of the best things that's ever happened to me personally. Yeah, it's uh, pretty wild to think about. And, uh, you know, uh, for me, um, it, it, it's absolutely an honor to be a part of uh, Dreamwalker and have uh, a, a character my, uh, portrayed in Dreamwalker. But for me, I just couldn't be more happier for Mikey son and uh, everything that he's been able to build, you know, the Mikey versus real. Um, and it, you know, this is going to be a topic and uh, just a, a show that, you know, is really needed in this, uh, in this world. You know, it, it's a lot of um, just, going to be amazing content. It's going to be new content. That's the biggest thing. It's going to be fresh content. And it's a great story as well. So if you haven't picked up your comics over at Second Skin Comics, man, yeah, you need to get on the train like Batman did. You, you know what, Batman? You need to make yourself full screen for a second and uh, really, really give people a show of that. <laughs> okay. Mm. Got to Ooh. Yeah, it, the the artwork by Noel is uh, absolutely amazing too. It's uh, it's 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 going to be fantastic for sure. I'm I, I can't wait for the show. Neither can I. I just I'm really happy for Mikey Sutton, dude. You really deserve this. So you know, certain people not look, going after your content, calling you fake. But guess what, guys? He's real. Mm -hmm. Mikey Sutton is real. And. But, and I'm going to post the link to Second Skin Comics in the description and the chat. So please buy, buy Dreamwalker, some of the like really fresh content. And with DC being depressing now, it's nice to have IP that I can finally be excited for again. Right. That is unless certain things happen with DC. Corey, how did you feel when Henry Cavill announced he was back as Superman? How, how was that for you? Man, I, I was uh, so hyped, you know, that uh, uh, 
you know, we've been waiting for so long as fans, you know, uh, we, we kind of went through a struggle there where, you know, they, they moved away from Henry Cavill, but, you know, he said the cape uh, is still in his closet, uh, but they weren't utilizing him. They were coming up with different projects that just weren't working. Um, and then, you know, Zaslav takes over and, you know, it, it, we're getting these vibes that uh, Henry Cavill's back as Superman and then boom, Black Adam hits. We get the uh, mid credit scene and the announcement right after, right? It was uh, an absolutely exciting time. So, um, yeah, I, I, I was pumped. Uh, we got our Superman back um, and uh, was just absolutely thrilled back then. I mean, and surely once they announced that they would never go back on something, like no studio would ever, ever go back on something that was already announced to the fans. I mean, you would have to, that would be some poorly managed studio if they did something stupid like that. A a absolutely. It was, uh, um, you know, I I as we know about Dan, what happened. And uh, um, <laughs> uh, shortly after, uh, he said that, no, he's not coming back as uh, Superman. And that he had a conversation with, uh, the new, um, you know, DC uh, studio heads and everything like that. And uh, um, unfortunately, they made the poor decision to uh, not uh, bring Henry Cavill back. It, it was, uh, it was uh, probably more frustrating than anything because um, obviously we, we always wanted Henry Cavill to come back, but uh, to finally hear him say that he was back as Superman, see him in Black Adam, and then immediately just have it ripped away from you. Uh, the whole situation uh, was just mismanaged and, uh, you know, unfortunate all the way around. I agree. I mean, look, I think, in my opinion, Warner Brothers Discovery, they owe Henry Cavill the professional courtesy of getting him his second solo Superman movie out there right now. And look, me personally, I don't want to necessarily get in the way of James Gunn and Peter Safran's plan. They have their own plans. And it, some of it we may like, some of it we may not. But we'll see that when we see that. But a good friend of ours, Skywalker the Jedi, had a great workaround for this. Hashtag, sells the SJL to Netflix. Hashtag, sells Snyderverse to Netflix. This was, if you've seen some of my previous videos, basically, long story short, get DC, Warner Brothers Discovery, to license out DC content to Netflix so that Netflix themselves can finish the Snyderverse. It's Zack Snyder's home with Army of the Dead and Rebel Moon. Ray Fisher's on there. Henry Cavill has worked on there. Gal Gadot has worked on there. Ben Affleck has worked on there. So there's already a history of Snyderverse actors. And... Peter Safran at this whole slate release said that they want to license out other shows to Netflix. So this would be a great way to get Zack Snyder's Justice League 2, to get Zack Snyder's Justice League 3, to get the air cuts. And as you've seen me talk about previously, the Batflick movie. Uh, Corey, what, what are your thoughts on this whole sell Snyder versus the Netflix campaign? You know, I, I like, uh, I, 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 I'm just a big fan of it, actually. Um, it, it's a positive movement. It's a uh, movement that uh, is not focusing on the negatives. It's only focusing on the positives and, you know, the possibilities of uh, moving forward. Now, I, I, you and I know, both know about Dan. This is going to be a heck of a fight. This is going to be uh, a, a lot of work to do uh, to continue to make this trend and everything like that. But um, it's awesome that we're all, uh, already seeing glimpses of hope, um, you know, Sky made a great campaign. He's been promoting it well. Definitely check out Skywalker the Jedi on YouTube for more information about uh, his hashtags. But uh, like you said, Beth Dan, Peter Sanford said, uh, uh, you know, the possibility of selling um, different, uh, um, you know, licensing rights and uh, IPs to, to other streaming services uh, just recently, right? Yeah, exactly. And James Gunn has even promoted that Elseworlds is going to be a thing mm -hmm. that we're going to get, you know, there'll be projects outside the main DCU continuity that they'll do like Matt Reeves, the Batman project will be labeled Elseworlds. And do you want to hear a hot take? I kind of prefer the Snyderverse to be Elseworlds even before James Gunn stepped in because Snyder can just tell his own story. And it, 
it's that simple. I mean, what do you think, Corey? Yeah, you know, uh, they teased uh, Elseworlds. They've, um, you know, teased about, you know, selling licensing rights uh, to uh, streaming networks. Um, you know, we, as we know, you know, WBD is uh, um, a little bit having a, a money issue, right? So, oh, yeah. um, you know, Gunn is trying his uh, as, as best as he can do to uh, kind of reboot things on his end uh, for the money that he has, for the the ideas that he has. So it kind of makes sense uh, to kind of allow for these else worlds to happen. And um, I, I get it, you know, Superman, uh, Batman, you know, there's a lot of big IPs and there's possibly, you know, uh, you know, maybe concerns of, you know, competing with the, the current universe, but, you know, people can figure it out. People can negotiate, uh, you know, release dates and all, all the different types of aspects that goes into the, the business side of things to make sure that they don't compete. And in reality, if, uh, you know, WBD is making money uh, off of, you know, selling some of that licensing rights for a story that they don't plan to uh, continue, why, why not make some extra money on the side, you know? Exactly. I mean, here's the thing. The more projects that WBD license out, the more money that they make. As I've said previously, that for WBD, it's all it's all reward, no risk. I mean, I mean, not that it would happen. Let's just say that these projects, the Snyderverse projects, bomb, absolutely bomb on Netflix. WBD doesn't have to take the risk. <laughs> it's not it's not their money that they lose. But Netflix has confidence in Zack Snyder. They, I mean, he got. He has not one but two Snyder verses on Netflix, or one if you go with my fan theory that Army of the Dead and Rebel Moon are the same universe. But that's a topic for another time. And no, there's no way that uh, a global phenomenon is going to bomb on Netflix either. So it's, uh, um, you know, it's going to be it's, if they if they can make it work, it, it's going to be huge. Exactly, and I've previously mentioned in. One of my in my last video about this topic about how the Batflick movie would be a great starting point because it's a low budget project and it's you know a singular character so not as many actors but even though this would be more special effects than the Batflick project I argue personally that they should do the Man of Tomorrow Superman Dawn of Hope Man of Steel two what whatever this movie was going to be called. So many, so many different names for it, but we know there's a script already written for it with Brainiac, Daniel Craig is Brainiac. Oof. And if they're not going to use, if WBD is not going to use it, why not license that project out to Netflix? It'd be a great project for Zack Snyder to direct. Still not as many actors. And it would be a great way for WBD to kind of, professionally make it up to Henry Cavill for that 180 they pulled on him. If they could at least find a way that he can still do his solo movie. So that announcement wasn't for nothing. Yeah, you, you're, you're absolutely uh, right, Pat, Dan. Um, it, it would be great. You know, there's uh, a lot of things that come into play there. Um, as you mentioned, uh, you know, the Batman movie would be a quick, easy one to do. The air cut uh, release, you know, would be a quick, easy thing to do to make some money. Um, and then the, you know, whatever you want to call it, Man of Tomorrow, Man of Steel 2, um, is also really important. If, the, if Netflix or any streaming service wants to go in and uh, purchase some of these licensing rights for, you know, Zack Snyder's Justice League, um you, it's it, it's very important, you know, that um, Henry Cavill gets his Man of Steel 2 film. Um, obviously, you know, in some ways, I think to kind of help help entice him to come back in some ways and, you know, refill his role. I, I think he would love to, you know, portray Superman again in, in his own solo film. Um, so, you know, you know, make a juicy offer for him. And then uh, it, it, as far as good storytelling goes, you know, if they were to continue the Zack Snyder's Justice League uh, Part 2, Part 3, um, you know, we kind of know what they're setting up for, that, you know, Superman's going to fall to the anti-life equation. Um, well, 
we need a kind of an in-between movie before they go into Zack Snyder's Justice League 2 and before, you know, Superman goes dark again and everything like that. We need to see Superman at his peak level of, you know, power, uh, of, you know, righteousness, of, uh, you know, hope, uh, being a just a positive light uh, in this universe and galaxy. So, um as far as good storytelling, uh, this film needs to happen in that sense as well. You know, uh, you can't just go straight from, you know, BBS, and, right? And, you know, uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League uh, 1 right into Zack Snyder's Justice League 2 and just immediately just, you know, start to see the downfall of uh, Superman, in my opinion. We, we need to see that um, peak Superman at his, you know, top performance level and, Man, you know, you you said it best, uh, Bat Dad. Uh, Brainiac, Brainiac is a fantastic villain. Um, there's besides television shows, we we really haven't you know seen too much of uh, of uh, different villains for Superman. You know, unless you're talking, you know, the anime uh, may uh, uh, series and. Uh, uh, the cartoon series and such like that. Really, you know, we always get, you know, General Zod, uh, you know, uh, it, Doomsday. Um, but we were seeing, or uh, um, Lex Luthor, for example, as Superman villains. Uh, it would have been an awesome opportunity to uh, show people that there's more villains out there for Superman. Because I I, I would take a, a bet that uh, general audience, for the most, point, uh, most part, would probably be able to name more Batman villains versus, you know, Superman villains. What, what are your thoughts on that, Batman? A hundred percent. I mean, let's be honest. Batman's rogues gallery is always more popular than Superman's rogues gallery. Like, well, well, here's an example. We'll use my mom. My mom is basically not a superhero fan at all. Like she does not know anything about superheroes other than like what average people would know. Like, so like in terms of Batman villain, she knows, Joker, Penguin, Riddler, Catwoman. Mm -hmm. But with Superman, she knows Lex Luthor. So yeah, there's not a lot of Superman villains are not properly featured. And let's be honest. I mean, now I haven't seen anything past Superman 2 in terms of the Christopher Reeves stuff, but... Superman 3 used a computer, some made-up villain. Superman 4 used Nuclear Man. It's like... Well, like, like Superman 3, it's like a... And again, if someone who's actually seen Superman 3 knows, wants to be more specific in the chat, go ahead. But, like, if it was a computer thing, they could have just used Brainiac. And they didn't. So this would be a chance to finally right that wrong and use a villain that we haven't seen on the... I was going to say the big screen. It wouldn't be the big screen. But, like, that we haven't seen in in a big live action production, a big budget live action production. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, uh, you know, Daniel Craig, uh, like you mentioned is, is a fantastic actor. So it, that, you know, kind of piques my curiosity too, to see how he would have, you know, portrayed, uh, um, Brainiac, uh, yeah, yeah, it, it, we we certainly missed out, and uh, there was a you know I felt like there was a lot of hype, you know, when you know <laughs> Henry Cavill made the announcement that he's back as Superman, and you know immediately like you you, you said, you know people started to um, try to figure out who the next villain is, and you know Brainiac just would have been so cool, man, would have been would have been really awesome to to see in the universe, so. Um, yeah, it, it, it was a missed opportunity and, uh, you know, hopefully Netflix or, uh, you know, I'm hoping Netflix because Zack Snyder's there, but so I'm hoping that somebody can capitalize on that missed opportunity and, uh, create a good, great, another great story. Um, I, I, I guess, uh, for you, Beth Dan, um, you know, you mentioned, uh, Christopher Reeves and, uh, um, that's one a Superman. Obviously, everybody points to. Um, do you have a preference? Which one, uh, Christopher Reeves or Henry Cavill, Superman? You know, who, who's who's your favorite Superman? Henry Cavill, all day. Henry Cavill is my Superman. He's 
here's the thing with Henry with Superman to me. Superman to me has a lot of times been kind of an over an overrated character. This perfect being that like never seems to fail. That was until Zack Snyder. Zack Snyder is the first the first director to really make me interested in Superman. And while Zack Snyder was likely not going to direct that particular Superman film at the time, it still would have carried on Zack Snyder's legacy. It still would have been his story. It still would have been his Superman. And it would have been a chance for something different because it seems that James Gunn is going to do that Christopher Reeves Superman, which I like Christopher Reeves. Don't get me wrong but it's time for something different. And that's what Zack Snyder was giving us with Henry Cavill's Superman. And I'm hoping that Netflix maybe still could. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. Great point. Stan. I I think that's one of the frustrating thing uh, about it all is, you know, as Superman, as a Superman fan, um, I I obviously, I absolutely love Christopher Reeve growing up as a kid. Um, And it, um, we won't talk about that other show that I, I might be into Smallville. Um, but uh, right now, but uh, Henry Cavill was the first person to become Superman again. That I was like, Oh man, that is Superman. You know, like it, Brandon Roth, don't get me wrong. He, you know, kind of re looking back at him now. He, he, he did a good job, but um, I, there wasn't a Superman that I have felt this connected to since Christopher Reeves, and that's you know Henry Cavill. Um, he he portrayed it in, in in a really unique and amazing way. Um, it was fun to you know see his struggles and his growth, and you know he he definitely uh, had a, a great story, of course, and uh, that that could be helping quite a bit as well. But uh, he uh, Henry Cavill himself uh, portraying that role and his interpretation of um you know the story and how he you know just acted it was just absolutely amazing uh it, it was beautiful um it left us wanting more after um you know man uh, man of steel and then bbs and then you know we had that other uh justice league cut and um then we saw the Zack snyder's justice league and just absolutely amazed once again with Henry Cavill's uh, performance in in that, so you know this is in a lot of ways the the you know biggest Superman we've seen as, as live action Superman that we've we've ever witnessed. You know, actually having a Justice League Superman um, in live action um, at the at that at this level. Uh, so um, yeah, he, he, I, feel, I feel like he's been cheated out of a uh of a movie and uh i i hope that uh you know the campaign efforts continue and uh um you know if somebody does pick up uh uh Zack Snyder's just speak netflix um they should absolutely um you know create man of tomorrow as well in my opinion exactly and well another point with netflix too is do you know who else has been on netflix that we talked about daniel craig knives out mm-hmm another actor who works on Netflix. But there's a concern that people may have. We, The competing Superman. James Gunn is not going to want a competing Superman. I mean, you wouldn't have, like, two Batman going on simultaneously, would you? I mean, oh, having weird. two Batman at the same time? I mean, I mean, surely James Gunn was able to convince Matt Reeves to be the Batman, like, his Batman to be in the DCU. He's not doing some other, like, Batman and Robin movie or something like that. that that's a great point, Bat Dan. You know, uh, if they were that concerned about uh, multiple characters, whether it's confusing the general audience or it's pulling away from the the main uh, story arc or storyline that uh, Gunn is trying to tell then it would make the most sense to me that they get rid of, uh, you know, Batman, uh, uh, Matt Reeves, uh, Batman. So it's, um, you know, that argument doesn't hold much weight and doesn't make much sense to me, especially, especially when he said that, uh, 
it's Elseworlds. And Elseworlds is, is, is something that is actively happening uh, in his universe, even though we're also having a cohesive universe as well. So it kind of kind of seems like we're in the exact same spot as we've always been with uh, WB and DC and everything like that. So, um, you know, at this point, why not, <laughs> you know? Exactly. That's, I mean, we have Superman and Lois going on at the same mm-hmm. time anyways. We may got that, what's that director's name that's doing that other Superman cults or Ty... Oh, um, the J.J. Abrams Superman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that still happening? Supposedly it's still happening. Supposedly they're still going to license that out to another service. So they're already doing multiple Superman, and it's something different for – I mean, Superman Lois, you got the father family Superman. Done, you got a young new Superman. Henry Cavill, you would have a, an older, more experienced Superman. Man, so yeah. all the different Superman are already very different than what's going on at then. So there, there wouldn't be a lot of overlap. And James Gunn, he's not using Brainiac as far as we know. That rumor is mixy. Let's pit mixy. Let's pit like I'm like, why, why did they make such a stupid like a hard to pronounce Superman villain name? <laughs> mixy, let's pit like. Right. Um, no. Uh, yeah. I. I. I I don't. I just, you know, may, maybe he has interest in doing a Brainiac, uh, but there's, you know, there, there's other things that they could do. You know, um, clearly the Black Adam situation is kind of confusing as well. Um, that could be something that's, you know, introduced on the Netflix side of things. I, I, I think overall there there's ways to work around and there's ways to bring in new characters. And uh, for me, it kind of seems that uh, from what we've seen of uh, James Gunn Slate is uh, he's kind of into those, you know, different, uh, weirder, um, unheard, maybe weirder is not necessarily the right term, but the more unheard of that, that obscure, yeah, obscure list of uh, characters, both uh, superheroes and villains wise. So, um, it'd be interesting to see if he would have an issue with them, uh, uh, doing Brainiac, uh, as an else world with. Um, you, you know, a man of tomorrow, but once again, like he already kind of said, you know, with the Flash movie, it's he's planning on using it as resetting everything and you know, the multiple different areas of everything that can potentially happen. Elseworlds makes a whole lot of sense, and it's it's dumb if they don't uh allow for it, exactly. And another point I do kind of want to bring up since you mentioned Flash. Just saying, he had the Flash TV series on CW, Grant Gustin, and then he had Ezra Miller's Flash in that film that shall not be named. But the point is, you had two consecutive Flashes in one going on at the same time. Plus, you had the two Flashes meet in in that Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover, on, which was technically an Arrow episode. A lot of people call it Flash, but it was actually an episode of Arrow where... Grant Gustin and Ezra Miller met. Mm-hmm. So there's history right there with the Flash too. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm. Um, I've never, you know, I, I think all of us as uh, DC fans, we we probably wanted, you know, and we felt like we were probably going to get to the closest level of, you know, uh, a a one universe cohesiveness uh, with, uh, you know, kind of Zack Snyder's plan. Um, However, you know, we've always been used to the this Elseworlds idea, the multiple, you know, it, it's just something that's always happened in, in, in DC. And uh, for some way, for some things, you know, it's kind of frustrating as a fan um, to hear them say, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that, or Henry Cavill, you're not coming back, but then allow for other... Um, else worlds with the Matt Reeves Batman, you know, because I we can we've talked about it, uh Bat Dan. We were we on the Bat Channel, we were super hard about Matt Reeves oh, yeah. the Batman. Um now uh I, I did have some good th- we, we both did have some good things to say. Um like Colin Farrell uh, as Penguin, fantastic job. And um I even mentioned on that show that or one of our shows that um 
I, I was kind of, out, if, out of anything in that uh, that side of Matt Reeves universe. I was kind of interested in a penguin, you know, uh, television series because of how fantastic of a job that uh, he did with it. So, um, it, 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 I, I just I, I just hate how it's you know it's. This, this else world can happen. This else world definitely can't happen. You know, it's like for if we're, if you we're not going to have else worlds, then don't have else worlds. Uh, if we are going to have else worlds, then you know, let's have else worlds. You know, it's it doesn't make sense to me. Exactly. The only counter argument I can think of is that people will be mad that they'll be comparing Gunn's Superman to Henry Cavill's Superman. But here's my counter to that. It's going to happen regardless. People have already seen Henry Cavill's Superman. If you don't want that comparison, what you would have to do is to get mind-wiping devices and just wipe Henry Cavill as Superman from everyone's memory. But you're not going to do that. You're going to compare it no matter what. Wouldn't you agree? It, it, that, that argument is stupid to me. If you're worried about comparisons, uh, then don't ever recreate any any character ever again, you know. Um, I, I think about all the time that <coughs> people uh, compared, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, Christopher Nolan's uh, uh, universe, uh, and people are really worried about, you know, Ben Affleck's portrayal of Batman. So oh, yeah, uh, uh, Trey was one of them, and uh, I, I still like to say to this day, I was like, oh, give him a chance, Trey. I think he may be the best uh, Batman we've ever seen. And uh, yeah, you're welcome, Trey. I uh, called that one. Um, you know, who knows uh, what what happens with uh, you know the whoever James Gunn casts as uh, his Superman. You know, maybe he's a fantastic Superman. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, may, may, maybe he he choose the you know, a fantastic cast member to you or, or actor to you, uh, portray Superman. Um, but I guarantee you, they're always going to see, Hey, is he as good as Henry Cavill? Hey, or is he as good as Christopher Reeves? And it, it is a little dangerous that he's trying to pick somebody that kind of, um, you know, looks like that Christopher Reeves Superman. So, um, instead of kind of completely creating your own, um, you know, Superman universe and everything like that uh, as well. So people are always going to compare. Um, and uh, like I told Trey uh, for Ben Affleck's Batman, uh, go in there with an open mind as, as best as you can. You know, obviously we're all, we're human. We're always going to have preferences and we're always going to have, you know, struggle to fight, you know, our biases, but um, you, you know, give it a chance. See, see what, see what happens. So um, I, I with that being said, you know, there's no reason not to have multiple Supermans. There already are currently, you know, Superman and Lois. There's already multiple Batmans, like you said. You know, um, the Flashpoint opens up a, a wide variety of possibilities. And uh, since they're open to us, worlds, anything's possible. Well, there's something you said that I want to kind of point out, too. When people with Ben Affleck, people always said, Give Ben Affleck a chance. He may not, like, you know, because we were all obsessed with Christian Bale. Give Ben Affleck a mm -hmm. chance. Give Ben Affleck a chance. And now they're using that argument against us with this new Superman actor replacing Henry Cavill. But you don't want to know what the biggest difference with those two situations are? Christian Bale's story was done. His yeah. story had a great ending, a proper ending, whereas Henry Cavill, they his story was not over. They announced he was coming back, and then they changed it. So the scenarios are not the same. To me, I can only accept the new Superman if we get a new, if we know that Henry Cavill is going to properly finish his story with with Man of Steel two, with Zack Snyder Justice League two, with Zack Snyder Justice League three. And just to clarify to anyone watching in the comment section or the chat, I know they may do different formats, series, whatever, but. I, for the sake of this, we're going to call it movies and take whatever format we get. But the point is, if Henry Cavill finishes his story, in my opinion, I think this Superman, this new Superman will have the advantage because at least people like us are giving him a chance. Because I have a question for you, Corey. Mm -hmm. Are you going to, do you want to watch James Gunn's new Superman film right now? Like, are you, what is your thoughts on like supporting WBD, supporting HBO Max, supporting James Gunn's, James Gunn's new Superman. 
What is, where are you going with that right now at this point in time? Yeah. Um, so, you know, obviously when the news came out that they were moving away from Henry Cavill, I was, I was pretty bummed out. I, you know, I was kind of trolling on the internet and everything like that. And, really? Uh, <laughs> um, and, uh, um, but I, 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 you know, it, it's what happens, you know? So, um, I, I mentioned on the other stream when we kind of reviewed, uh, uh, James Gunn slate for me, um, a lot of his, uh, shows and ideas, and I, I get it. That's not the full slate. Um, for me, I looked at it as, okay, this is James Gunn trying to create a whole new world. Um, is this phase one chapter one slate worthy? And uh, the Superman film uh, legacy that he has uh, is the only one that I thought was truly, uh, and Batman, uh, potentially we can have an, ar uh, an argument, uh, a debate based on that, um, were the only ones that were phase one, chapter one, slate worthy. Um, I I'm going to, as a, you know, kind of, of a content creator and everything like that, I'm going to take things on a... Um, movie by movie basis and uh, really kind of dive deep and watch, watch, continue to watch what they do. But uh, am I excited for it with everything that I know right now? No. Um, yeah. I'm going, you know, if I do end up going to see Superman uh, legacy, I'm going to try my best to not think like judge every second that he does, you know, like, Oh yeah. Henry Cavill would have done that so much better you know, that, that, that's stupid. Or, you know, I would try to, I would try to go into it with an open mind, but um, DC definitely makes it tough in some ways with how they treat uh, their actors, whether former past or current, you know? So it's, uh, it's going to be a game time decision for me. Um, am I excited about it right now? No, I'm going to have to kind of watch it as it gets closer, but it, it's tough because um you know, um, for you, for you, for example, Batman, um, I'm sure you weren't excited for uh, Sparkle Bats, but uh, you, you still went and saw the the, the film. So uh, because you're a content creator and you you wanted to 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 talk about it, and um, you know, most likely that's probably what's going to happen to me as well. Um, depending on uh, you know trailers and everything like that. But uh, no, not I, as of right now. I'm not excited. But here's, but I have a. Let's go with this hypothetical scenario. Sure. Let's say that tomorrow, let's say mm -hmm. there is some great deal reach between WBD and Netflix. Let's say that they reached an agreement where Henry Cavill could do Man of Steel two, Man of Tomorrow, whatever, directed by Zack Snyder on Netflix. And it was going to be released in 2026, but it was already confirmed this is going to happen in 2026. Would that change your stance on James Gunn's slate, on his Superman? Would you? Would that make you more excited to see James Gunn stuff at all? Um, it, I, I, I might be maybe a little bit more open to it. Um, you know, I, obviously, I feel I would have, I would feel that okay, we're, I'm going to get the conclusion with Henry Cavill and um, that that's going to make me happy. Um, to be completely honest with you, Beth, Dan, I, I'm not the biggest fan of James Gunn's writing and I, I know and directing it. So I know that's, uh, uh, um, that, that's a controversial topic as well. Um, you know, it, it, the failing upward side of things is something that I, I kind of believe in. Uh, with him, and uh, I know a lot of people talk about you know Guardians of the Galaxy is is some of his best work. Um, really, when I talk to people who do support uh, James Gunn, that's the only thing that they're able to cite to me is Guardians of the Galaxy. They're not able to name really uh, any other films that they truly, absolutely love. Um, so, um, I've tried to watch James Gunn stuff. It, it usually just doesn't you know. It, it, it doesn't pull me in. Um, he, he's, he's, I know currently he's writing Superman. Uh, he's, um, uh, you know, there's talks about him directing it. So my love for, uh, for the character of Superman, 
probably would I would still probably yeah probably be I'd probably go see it um especially you know I, I I like to look at things kind of two separate ways like if I you know if I wasn't a content creator would I see this movie in theaters um probably not um since I am a content creator will I see it in theaters yeah sure absolutely um but yes I I, I, I see what you're what you're asking about Dan and I I would say as we get closer if it appeared to be a good movie trailer wise and piqued my interest. Yes. Um, I, I, I would be happy to see the Superman legacy <laughs> if that kind of makes sense. You know, I, I, I just have always struggled with James Gunn's movies. I, I, I I'll admit it. I, I fell asleep through guardians of the galaxy and I know, I know you love it. I know other people in our community <laughs> love it. I, 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 I tried and uh, it's sad because I love Chris Pratt too. So, um, I, I just, um, there's not really any movies of his that I truly enjoyed. So, um, yeah, yeah, that, 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 that's the best way to explain it. So I, I'm kind of different in that sense. Um, but I, yeah, it, you know, if maybe if it was somebody other than James Gunn directing it, maybe he was just writing it and somebody else was directing it and, uh, you know, yeah, sure. Absolutely. I, I still want James Gunn to direct it because, you know, with him making all these changes and everything, I feel like Superman's the one he, he either, you know, builds this amazing universe off of or uh, he falls on the sword, you know. So, um, yeah, that, <laughs> that's how I kind of see it. Okay, well then, one more question is with that, though. You canceled HBO Max because you were upset. Would you at least subscribe, resubscribe to HBO Max if they announced that Henry Cavill was going to do a Superman film on Netflix? Um, yes, there was some good content on HBO Max. Um, The Last of Us, I hear, has been really good. Um. I'd probably wait a little bit. Um, I, I tend to be more of a binge watcher in, anyways. Um, and with kind of the lull we're going to see with the DC community, um, not seeing movies really until 2025, I'd probably, you know, <laughs> hold out a little bit until they, uh, you know, actually, or actually had some, um, some actual timelines for when, uh, things are going to hit, you know, HBO Max, the TV series uh, that they have planned. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I, I would uh, um, potentially re uh, uh, subscribe again. And that's how I am too. It's like, I, I mean, I'm with you. I mean, I'm concerned with, there's other things I have concerned with that Superman movie besides the fact that I'm mm -hmm. mad at what happened with Henry Cavill is, I wasn't a big fan of the Suicide Squad. Peacemaker was a guilty pleasure for me. It wasn't like, it was something I enjoyed, but it wasn't something I recognized as quality. It was mm -hmm. an obscure character, so I could just have a laugh with it, but that's not how I really want my Superman film to be. And I did cancel <coughs> my HBO Max. I have it till August because I did the year subscription, but at least I would, I, I would resubscribe to HBO Max. And out of the many things I, I am concerned about this movie, at the very least, my personal bias, because of how Henry Cavill was booted, at least that would be factored into whether or not I'm going to watch this movie. Because you mentioned how I went to see the Batman. The thing with me with the Batman was, at the time, I thought we were getting the Snyderverse. At the time, we were supposed to be getting the Snyderverse. So that was, that was kind of factored into my decision in seeing the Batman, was at that point, boycotting wasn't going to do anything. Mm -hmm. Whereas now it's like, I feel disrespected as a customer. And to me, it's like, if I see this movie, it's almost like saying that you can treat your customers any way you want and there's no consequences. And I kind of want to show us, hey, look, you know, you promised us Henry Cavill. I don't care about your semantics about, oh, he wasn't fired. I just didn't hire him, even though Warner Brothers was promoting the fact that he was bad. Mm -hmm. I, I don't care about semantics like that. The fact is, you know, Gunn knew that this announcement was made. When he took the job, he knew that announcement was already made. So to me, it's Gunn's responsibility to find a way to pay that off because you don't, when you take a role at a new position at a new company, you know, you have to still carry some of the baggage that happened before you were there, right or wrong, fair or not fair. You have to continue that baggage. And Gunn just 
felt like he's like, no, not my time. I don't care that he, Henry Cavill literally went on, on, did an interview about this. I'm just going to, no, I just, I don't like the way that I as a fan was treated. So I don't know if I am going to see this Superman film, but if they at least bring him, Henry Cavill back, let him do that Netflix film, find a way to make it right then I can be a lot more open to the Superman film because I'm going to be honest, there's some aspects of what Gunn is doing that I am excited about as a DC fan. Mm-hmm. But it's like I, I have that internal battle about like, oh, but I feel disrespected as a customer. But if you gave Henry Cavill his solo movie, just did that at least. Like, don't even necessarily get the Justice League stuff done right away because I know that's a lot more cast. That's a lot more time. And I know people say Nightmare, not everyone's there. But I mean... They're going to eventually undo that nightmare timeline. So you're going to need the entire cast at some point. So, but if they did like the smaller stuff, like the Ben Affleck Batman movie, like the Henry Cavill Superman movie, me as a fan, I would at least have that wouldn't be factored in there. And I'd be like, you know, hey, this DCU, Brave and the Bold, possibly Ben Affleck himself directing this movie, I would, I would have a lot more hype for it. And because that, that baggage would be taken out. That's so, yeah, that's why I would still see it. I guess, what what are your thoughts on the talks and rumors that uh, Ben Affleck may be directing one of Gunn's uh, movies? Is that something that, uh, out of support for Ben Affleck, you would uh, you would still go see? See, I, I said publicly that I would still support the Flash movie and Aquaman, too, because I do want to support the Snyderverse cast. So... I probably would support that project because I have a th- I have a saying, you know, don't boycott aimlessly, boycott strategically. I think the problem with a lot of certain people in the fandom was that before, I mean, here's the thing. People are not guilty of what they haven't done yet. Same with companies are not guilty of what they haven't done yet. So before Gunn was hired, WBD at that point was on our side. They were doing right by us. And Look, we don't re- re- realistically, we don't know if supporting Black Adam would have made a difference. I think it would have, but I think a lot of people were just boycotting that movie just because they thought that that would get the Snyderverse. It's like, it's a WBD movie, boycott it. They haven't, it's like, no, I mean, support what you support, what supports the Snyderverse, and don't support what doesn't support the Snyderverse. Don't look for roundabout ways where it doesn't. And to me, it's, I want to show support for that Snyderverse cast because. Let's say I turn up for that Ben Affleck directed Batman movie. That shows support for the Snyderverse cast. That shows more interest for like Netflix. Maybe if, if a deal's not made, they might go, hey, let's bring the cast. Let's bring more of that, that cast back. Yeah, I, I think that's why, you know, um, it's, it's also important to, you know, like judge things on a, you know, movie by movie basis. You know, is, is this a... Is this content that, or a story that you're interested in? You know, does does it have something that you you want to see? And uh, if you think you might be entertained and you want to spend your hard-earned money to go see it, then that, that that's your choice. You know, so th- I don't feel like you have to justify what you see and what you don't see to to anybody because um, um, you know. You, that that's your choice um but yeah no it, it definitely brings up an interesting conversation an interesting topic for sure um all, all good points all, all the way around exactly exactly and that's just and but that's why we're still because i mean you're right people do not have to justify how they spend their dollars but mm-hmm. i guess i'm more talking about when i see people like bragging about how they're boycotting the movie you know putting toxic in their bio or their name and it's like in my opinion you just you weren't helping the cause and i and that's why i mean here's what i'm going to say in terms of boycotting james gunn stuff me i'm just not going to see it if i choose not to see something i'm just not going to see it i'm not going to make a show about it i'm not i mean am i boycotting it yeah yeah i'm boycotting it but i'm not i'm just not going to make a big deal about the fact that i'm not seeing it i'm just going to not see it Vote with my wallet. That's what I. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm kind of encouraging people. If you don't want to see a movie, you don't have to. Just don't see it. Just don't pay for the tickets. I don't really encourage pirating because my thing is that if you don't want to see it, you shouldn't feel entitled to. You shouldn't feel entitled to give yourself stuff stuff for free. So don't. If you're not going to see it, just don't see it. But 
you know, there's another point, though, I kind of want to bring up with the whole Henry Cavill is that, you know, at the end of the Flash movie, Henry Cavill is supposed to be in that movie. He already shot his scenes for it. And now they're not going to use it. Now that people are wondering, why should we see this Flash movie now? I mean, what are your thoughts on that? You know, uh, is it absolutely confirmed that they're not going to be using, uh, I guess, the end of the scene stuff, yeah, since they're, um, sounds like they're changing things around. You know, it, it's interesting. I, uh, you know, are, are we going to, what, what are we going to see in that movie? How are they going to change everything up is, uh, oh gosh, something that interests me. Um, I, I guess overall, it's just kind of sad, you know, it's, uh, uh, it, it, we, we didn't get that final hurrah with Henry Cavill. And I think that's what the, uh, the uh, sad, you know, what, what makes this whole story just so sad and, you know, why it also gives hope with the, uh, you know, Skywalker's campaign of, uh, um, you know, moving things to Netflix, uh, selling uh, those licensing rights. Um, yeah. I, 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 I know I, it's one of those things where, you know, could you imagine if uh, No Way Home said, oh, oh yeah, Toby Maguire, we shot scenes with Toby Maguire and, and Andrew, and uh, uh, then all of a sudden decide that they didn't want to <laughs> have those people in, in the movie at all and just flipped a 180 and uh, completely, you know, flipped the switch, you know, people, people would be upset. And that's, um, I, I think that's where a lot of the feelings are with, with everything that's going on. And you're absolutely right, Bat Dan. Um, they made some pretty, pretty radical decisions at a, at a poor timing, because if we're not going to get any films and, um, you know, things in this chapter one slate until 2025, 20, you know, time frame, um, we're going to go some time without, you know, some quality um dc content and th there, there were solutions they, they had ways to make make this all work uh um but they they chose to go a completely different way completely resetting things and you know are what is going to happen in the flash you know are, are we going to be you know ex excited for what's to come or are we going to leave with you know some more uh, bad taste in our mouth you know i i'm concerned that we're probably going to have a lot of bad taste in our mouth after after that film unfortunately that's one point exactly and that's why that's one thing man of tomorrow could fix think about mm -hmm. it i mean i don't know how fast they could make a deal but if they did make a deal in time before that flash film was picture locked at least for man of steel 2 they could still leave a lot of that stuff that they were setting up they could leave that stuff in the movie and it wouldn't go nowhere it wouldn't lead nowhere it would lead somewhere it would lead somewhere on Netflix. So they could still keep like the ending where Henry Cavill was in that soul, like lead to Henry Cavill solo Superman movie. I mean, heck, you know, at one point Andy Muschietti was going to direct it. And while I would still like Zack Snyder, I'd be open to Andy Muschietti directing the film if they wanted to kind of still keep that specific setup in the movie. But sure. here's a something, here's a twist I thought of for that flash ending is that Gunn has his own ending. Probably he reshot. What if, they're teasing the multiverse. What if when Barry comes back, what if we get two separate timelines existing? So like Barry went on his adventure, he's back home, but now he's split into two separate timelines. Both of these Barrys went on that whole adventure we saw. One ending, DeLuca's ending, where we were getting the Snyderverse, where we see Barry back with Henry Cavill, Superman, Gal Gadot, Wonder Woman, Ben Affleck, Batman. And then maybe they label that and then a big Elseworlds label appears on the screen. And then on, and then after that, we see Barry come back home again with the different changes showing that there are two separate timelines, keeping the DeLuca stuff, keeping that set up there that, you know, we were excited for, but at the same time, showing gun stuff, showing that this is a multiverse, showing that there's a new timeline that the main DCU continuity is going to follow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely right. And that's why, you know, Flash opens up a lot of possibilities, really endless possibilities. You know, uh, he could go really hop back and forth to any timeline that he, he, he want, you know, really wanted to go, you know, which, which uh, route, you know, different things like that. It's uh it, it, it 
you know, show up in Matt Reeves' back. <laughs> Uh, who, who knows? If uh, Matt Reeves allows that, probably. <laughs> yeah, Matt Reeves allows that, absolutely. <laughs> um, but, like, yeah, the possibilities are endless with this uh, story arc. So um, it's more of a why not question, you know? If we're going to allow for Elseworlds, let it happen. Exactly. And it, wouldn't you be more excited for the 2023 slate if, like, Flash – if Flash and Aquaman 2 were at least leading, even if it was leading to Netflix stuff, wouldn't that make you, would that make you more excited if if they at least announced Henry Cavill's solo Superman movie and that, that there's going to be set up for that in those two movies? It wouldn't sure. be Flash pointless. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no. And, and it, it also makes, you know, makes you wonder because Aquaman comes out after Flash, um, how, how that's all going to work together if, you know, his character, uh, Jason's character changes as well. So it's... Uh, um, there's a lot of questions, unanswered questions that I have about, uh, this year's upcoming movies, you know, uh, even, even with Shazam and, uh, Wonder Woman, uh, potentially as, uh, as well as, uh, we've seen a little snippets and such like that. So, um, what's, what's going to happen to some of these characters that we, we loved from the, the Snyderverse side of things. Exactly. That's. And, you know, think about Aquaman 2 having that Elseworlds label if they, again, I'm going to say this right now, James Gunn, on the chance that you're watching, I hereby give you full permission to use this idea free of money, free of credit. I do not care. This would be a way to win over everyone. Establish your multiverse. Do your thing. Give us Snyderverse, their cast. Because, you know, the biggest thing that kind of annoys me with not seeing this Henry Cavill solo Superman movie we're not asking Henry Cavill to come back forever. We just want to see a proper conclusion to his story, to the story that we love. Because James Gunn says that his story ended on Black Adam. No, that set up more stuff. I want to see Henry Cavill's story end. Just knowing that it ends would make me happy. And that's, and then I can move on. Then I can move on. Just finish his story out. I mean, what's your sentiment on that? Yeah, look, lucky for us, uh, Gun's not the end all, say all. Uh, there's still another portion of it. Peter Safran and he mentioned that he's interested in um, selling licensing rights to these different uh, streaming networks as well. So, and then obviously, uh, the big boss uh, uh, Zaslav is uh, um, going to have a lot of say in it as well. Obviously, so um, yeah. You're, you're, you're absolutely right. You know, the, the opportunity for uh, the multiverse, the, 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 the that, that Flash is going to create and with the Flashpoint and, uh, um, you, you know, the allowance now for uh, Elseworlds to be able to take place, there's no reason not to. Exactly. And this would, it would, this would just be a solution that would make everyone happy. And, you know, there's another thing people try to argue is that Netflix is poor. People think Netflix is broke and they cannot possibly afford to make a su- a Superman movie. What do you, what do you say to that, Corey? Man, I, I'm I'm impressed that uh, people have digged into to you know the you know higher Zach levels at uh, Netflix and they know everything that's going on. Um, yeah, um, DC is WBD is is. Uh, um, also, you know, we're, we're finding out broke. If you look at, you know, the different stock levels for each company, there's there's a clear, clear difference uh, of uh, uh, stock value and everything like that. So um, my suggestion is uh, I, I'm not going to decide what can and what can't be done. Um, there's obviously a possibility that uh, Safran has, uh, has openly said uh, the, the possibility of selling licensing rights. So um, for me, you know, it, things, things can happen. Things can work out. Business people can negotiate and, uh, they, they can figure it out. You know, let, let, let them figure it out. I'm not going to say, no, this can't happen. I'm, no, I'm against this. No, anything like that. It, let them figure it out. You know, this is, um, it's, it's really not that hard people, you know, the, the, they'll negotiate whatever they need to do to make both uh, companies successful if that's the route that they want to go. And clearly it looks, it seems like they're both open uh, for business, you know, potentially, hopefully Netflix is, but uh, clearly Peter Sanfran uh, announced that he was. So 
Netflix has already worked with uh, WBD uh, and with DC uh, characters and stuff like that before. So um, just a, another walk in the park for them in, in a lot of ways. So, yeah, um, I'm going to let them, you know, figure it out. And that's my same sentiment, too. For example, I'm still going to, even though Ben Affleck is rumored and, or I guess James Gunn has already said that he, that Ben Affleck's directing, let's say Ben Affleck does direct the the Batman project, the the Brave and the Bold project. Mm -hmm. A lot of people might think that, oh, well, we shouldn't campaign for the Batfleck movie anymore. I'm like, look, maybe Ben Affleck doesn't want, maybe Ben Affleck, if this offer was made with the Snyder vs. Skinner sword, wouldn't do it. But I'm that, it's, my thing is, I'm going to let Ben Affleck decide. I'm going to let Netflix decide. I'm going to let Warner Brothers Discovery decide that. I'm not going to decide that. I, as a fan, I want, I mean, okay, the Aircut's already filmed, so I don't really want to entertain us not getting that one. But, like, Man of Man of Tomorrow, Man of Steel 2, whatever, the Bat Flick movie, Zack Snyder's Justice League 2, Zack Snyder's Justice League 3. I want that in movie mm-hmm. format, in live action, with the cast, and, it, you know, what, what they can do with that, I'll let them decide. If they want to make it a series that's up to them to decide if they have to recast someone oh god i hope not other than <laughs> i mean if they have to recast mirror i'll be honest i haven't followed that trial so i'm indifferent on that recast just because i'm not going to speak on what i'm not informed about but other than that i do want everyone that yes even jason momoa i don't care that he's happy about doing other stuff i'm you know, yes, even Ezra Miller, I believe in innocent until proven guilty. And, you know, I, if you saw episode 7 on my channel, you know where I'm at, I am on that. Of Bat Damn Sauce, I should say. If you saw, you know where I stand on that. So, again, I'll let Netflix decide what they want to do. What Warner Brothers Discovery decide what they want to do. What the actors decide they want to do. That I mean, I mean, is that mostly, would you say, your stance? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And we, we know, uh, I think we both know Bat Damn that. Um, th- this is going to take a lot of work and a lot of effort on both sides. And, uh, you know, it, 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 you know, it, 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 who knows what's, what's going to happen. I, 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 I'm, I'm just going to remain hopeful that, uh, um, that, uh, you know, they, they go, uh, they follow the right path, basically that Dan. Um, ab- yeah, Absolutely. And well, you said you said it's going to take a while. It's going to be a long process. That's why I think I like I like that's why I like also campaigning for these smaller projects because it's not as much to ask for a Superman film as a Justice League film. It's not as much to ask for a Batman film as a Justice League film. It's not as much to ask for an already filmed Suicide Squad movie as a not filmed Justice League. So it's like you know we it's a good way to, as you said to start small, start with the smaller projects, and then when they see those are a success, I mean, again. We as fans know that Zack Snyder's Justice League 2 and 3 would be a success, and Netflix has faith in Zack Snyder. But, like, if they did want to kind of test out the waters with the Snyderverse a little bit, start smaller, that would be a good way, I argue, to start it. And, you know, here's another reason why I feel like Netflix should do it. There's different re- rumors for why Henry Cavill left Witcher. I mean, yes, he was supposed to be Superman, but I personally think if he really liked The Witcher, he would have still stayed with The Witcher and just worked out the scheduling. We know there was like different scheduling rumor or like creative differences Henry Cavill had with the writers. Mm-hmm. This would be a great way for Netflix to restore a relationship with Henry Cavill saying, you know, hey, sorry that, you know, your Witcher experience, you know, that things didn't really go great for you with the Witcher. We got the rights for you to be Superman on our platform. Would you would you care to like when the, I mean, don't you think that'd be a great way for Netflix to kind of restore that relationship with Henry Cavill? Yeah, yeah, um, I, I, uh, um, I, I, I've heard that there was uh, maybe creative differences with Witcher, and um, uh, I, I'm not aware of any bad blood that the network, uh, Netflix, and uh, Henry Cavill may have towards each other. But uh, I, I, I think, um, in some ways, uh, it kind of reconfirms to Henry that uh, Netflix is open for business and Netflix is uh, about making quality content. So, yeah, I, I can see what you're saying. Exactly. And look, I don't know if Netflix and Henry Cavill really have bad blood, but, I mean, it's still not a great parting on, and it would be a good way to restore that relationship. Plus, think of the irony. Henry Cavill left Netflix to be Superman, and then he returns to Netflix to be Superman. Wouldn't that be <laughs> such an ironic 
<laughs> twist to all this. Yeah, no, <laughs> absolutely It'd be kind of funny. <laughs> so just any final thoughts, like any final reasons that you feel that we should, that this man of tomorrow should happen, anything that we haven't covered, any counter arguments? Yeah, no, uh, I, I think we laid them out pretty, pretty uh, well, Bat Dan. Um, you know, the <laughs> fact that uh, there was a lot of hype behind uh, the Man of Tomorrow uh, film uh, with Brainiac, that fans were getting really excited for it after um, Black Adam, um, that uh, if uh, Netflix does go in on uh, potentially, you know, continuing and, you know, start, uh, buying the licensing rights for Zack Snyder's Justice League uh, and continuing and finishing that uh, amazing story that we need to have that uh, Superman at peak level of righteousness, uh, uh, the American way, the uh, um, just good and light uh, Superman before we see him come to his uh, fall. So, um yeah, it, it's it's all important uh, uh, to uh, everything that uh, this campaign is uh, moving uh, towards, and uh, it's yeah, it, it's something that it's it's still worth fighting for, and it's still worth uh, pushing for. And yes, uh, I, I think we both can agree back then that this is going to take a lot of work. That there's um, you know a lot of things that uh, has to happen to make this happen, and um, yeah, it's. Uh, it's it's definitely worth uh, fighting for and uh, and campaigning for. Exactly, and I think and to get this fight, we have to remember Skywalker the Jedi had three rules of engagement. That look, whatever your stances are, whatever where whether you like WBD, whether you wanna whether you want James Gunn fired, we have to be in agreement on this hashtag. We have to stand together. We don't have to agree on every little issue, but for the sake of these hashtags, it's important to remember Skywalker's rules of engagement. This isn't about eagles. This isn't about, you know, trying to tell people, other people what to tweet. We just want to create the strongest movement possible. So it's very important that we remember the three rules of engagement. And we're going to go over them right now. Rule number one, be positive. It's very important that, look, I was on the Fire James Gunn campaign. Corey was on the Fire James Gunn <laughs> campaign. We remember that, Corey. And <laughs> it's time that we were on this. Like, I'm, I'm making this point because to show that we were with that, too. I mean, I still have that video up where I have Fire James Gunn written on here. <laughs> because I'm, gonna, I'm not going to take something down because that's what I thought at the time. But now... It's time for something more positive. We have a positive alternative to, to this, to get where we want without being negative. It, the time for negativity is over. In Ant-Man 3, the trailer, Ant-Man said, I don't have to win. We both just have to lose. That's what Fire James Gunn was. But this is a strategy for us to win, not for us both to lose. And now, rule number two. Oh, it's me, my turn? Uh, yep. Oh, gosh. Uh, rule number two is what? Only use the uh, two hashtags, right? The uh, sell uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League ZSJL to Netflix or uh, hashtag uh, sell Snyderverse to Netflix. Uh, those are the only two uh, hashtags uh, that, uh, you know, we really want to be using, even though, uh, as you heard in this, um, this uh, video, that... You know, we want to see the, you know, make the man tomorrow, make the Batfleck movie. No, when uh, uh, it's all a part of the same thing. That's why the uh, hashtag uh, sell Snyderverse to Netflix was created. That This encompasses all of everything that we wanted within that Snyderverse um, uh, universe. So, um, yeah, only use those two hashtags. And let's say if you want to specifically talk about Man of Tomorrow or the Batfleck movie. Can we still do a post that's just dedicated to those specific projects? Um, I, 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 obviously, you, you absolutely can talk about it and everything like that. But just remember that the way the Netflix algorithms work, the main two hashtags, sell ZSJL, and make sure you're spelling it right, sell ZSJL to Netflix and hashtag sell Snyderverse to Netflix 
is the um, the main hashtag. So we, we want to focus on that. Nothing else. Exactly. Right here. Sell Snyder versus to sell Snyder versus to Netflix. Written <laughs> like that. And hold on a second. I just got to get this done. And the, we're going to go over the last rule of engagement where I have sell ZS Jail to Netflix. Written out. Our con our conversation is with Netflix. Keep Netflix. They're the ones we are asking. They are our they are the ones that we want to give our money to. They are the ones who have the relationship with Zack Snyder. Let them talk to WBD. Let them talk to, to David Zasloff. Let them figure out the logistics. Let them figure out if they can get live action, if they can get the the movie format, or if they want to do a series form format, or if, if they can even do all the projects that we want, let them figure out them out. Show our interest as customers to Netflix. They are the ones we are having our conversations with. You know, WBD right now they don't care about us. Let's we don't need to mention them. We don't need to tag them. Let let James Gunn do his own thing. He has his own thing going on Netflix. Let that go. We are not on Netflix at WBD. You know, let them do their thing. We just want the proper conclusion to the story that we all love. So, and Netflix can get this to us. We have to be in agreement on this, people. We we can do this. I, I, I know we can. We just have to be in agreement. We just have to work together. I mean, don't you agree, Corey? As long as we just work together, no arguing, no clean slate with everyone. Absolutely. And uh, we, we need everybody's help. You know, there's uh, um, there's been old campaigns. Uh, there's new campaigns. Uh, this is uh, kind of the the last hurrah in some ways. You know, um, this is kind of the the last stand and uh, we need to follow the ROEs and the rules of engagement and uh, we need everybody's help to, to do it. It's this is a. Um, it's going to be a lot of work ahead of us uh, as we uh, come close to uh, the, the, new, the upcoming trending events, as we uh, continue to push uh, these um, hashtags. You know, we, this is a team effort and uh, uh, old accounts, uh, we need your help as well. We're, um, we're using new techniques and new hashtags, uh, but uh, uh, in some ways, we're kind of using the old ways uh, still. So uh, make sure you're uh, jumping on board with us and uh, following the ROEs too. Exactly. And look, I will always be thankful for the Restore the Snyderverse movement. This mm -hmm. is not about disrespecting that old movement. Unfortunately, it just didn't work. WBD is not restoring the Snyderverse. I will, this isn't about disrespecting any previous movement. This is trying something new, a new way to get to where we want. And I still see some mixing of hashtags. It's not, we need this, we want these to trend as long as possible. I mean, I've said before, I think one problem we had with Restore the Snyderverse is we had way too many hashtags. We had Restore the Snyderverse, release the air cut, make the bat flip movie, make Man of Tomorrow, you know, bring back Zack Snyder, fire James Gunn, boycott WB, boycott WBD. We need to keep this, and this is one thing, like we only grow with improvement. You know, we only grow... Today's excellence is tomorrow's crap. And that's just, or yeah, yeah, that's the, that's the expression. That's, and that's just what it is here. It's like today, like what worked then, that was great then, tomorrow, it, it's, it's not. Because we just want to grow and we can, I mean, and that's what we need to do. I mean, don't, I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Everything you said is uh, true. It's, uh, uh, we, we need everybody's help. We need to uh, uh, continue to stay positive. Um, to move forward in the uh, really the only way that uh, this is still you know possible, uh, as San Fran pointed out himself. So um, yeah, we have to move forward. We have to continue to to uh, you know make these hashtags trend and uh, show uh, Netflix that there's a uh, a a demand for it. So um, you're, you're you're absolutely right, Pat. Dan. Thank you and. You know, thanks for coming on, Super Bowl, Corey. Um, tell us, what do you have going on on the, I guess it is still the Bat Channel. What do you? <laughs> yeah, no, uh, thank you so much, Bat Dan. This has uh, been a uh, fantastic stream. And uh, 
Uh, I it's an honor to be a part of uh, your kind of your new series here that you're having. Um, so uh, thank you for uh, ha having me on. Um, you know, uh, we've known each other for quite some time now, Bat Dan, and uh, um, you know, I, I don't know what's in store for uh, everything that's coming up. We we have a lot of you know battles ahead of us and. Uh, um, a, a lot of things that has to, you know, work perfectly in our way and hopefully they do. But uh, um, just remember that, you know, you, you always be my friend, but, you know, we, uh, uh, it was a pleasure meeting you in uh, uh, real life uh, out in Illinois uh, when we were out there last and uh, uh, you've uh, you're, you're more than just bad Dan to me. You're, you're, you're a friend. So uh, always here for you, bud. And I uh, truly appreciate you having me on your first show. So um you know, whatever, wherever this all takes us, you, 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 you know, us as the, the community that we've grown through, uh, the Mikey Verso Nation, the Cool Table, uh, you, Bat Dan, uh, uh, you know, the Bat Channel, we've all become such uh, great friends with each other, and we, we, we will always have that. Um, yeah, uh, we are doing a lot of crazy things on the uh, Bat Channel right now. Uh, we just got done with a uh, great stream uh, interview with uh, Mikey's son, uh, uh, talking about uh, Dreamwalker and uh, everything that uh, has to come. His uh, wonderful comics with uh, Noel, and um, yeah, it's just a absolutely beautiful artwork there, and it's a, it's a fantastic story, and I'm I'm so excited for it to and it's so uh, to become a TV series, and I'm. Uh, excited for fresh content, new content in the TV uh, format and uh, an area that uh, uh, is needed, you know, that horror uh, kind of um, film. And, you know, it's bringing a lot of great cultures together as well. Uh, so that we had a really great interview last night. Uh, we're definitely going to be continuing uh, some Delta Squad streams. So uh, Bad Batch uh, um, has been uh, uh, fun as well. So looking forward to some more Delta Squad streams on the Bat Channel Saturday mornings. And then uh, we're also going to be continuing to help uh, push uh, Skywalker the Jedi's message uh, like you did tonight in, in such a fantastic way, Bat Dan, uh, pushing the hashtags. Um, one of the things that we uh, are planning on uh, doing is, uh, I believe it's uh, the Saturday before the main uh, event, uh, we are at the Bat Channel going to have a Army of the Dead watch party on our channel, and we want to kind of help uh, push uh, uh, Army of the Dead and, you know, Zack Snyder's work uh, on Netflix at Top Ten. And we, we thought it'd be really cool to not only be uh, streaming worldwide February 14th, hashtag sell Zack Snyder's Justice League to Netflix and hashtag sell uh, Snyderverse to Netflix that – uh, you know, the Trinity, the cool table, Skywalker, the Jedi uh, came up with, but we also thought it would be cool to uh, uh, have Army of the Dead uh, be a top 10 uh, on Netflix uh, that week, that day, uh, as it's all happening. So uh, that, that's, that's some of the themes that uh, we have uh, going on over at the Bat Channel. So if you haven't, make sure you come on over and uh, um, check us out. Link in the description below. Or and for context, by the way, this was recorded on Friday night, as I plan to have this premiere in the morning. So don't get confused if you hear the word tonight. <laughs> this morning, I guess. Uh, good morning. <laughs> but again, guys, just remember the rules of engagement and Dreamwalker. Second, again, this is just really good artwork by Noel Flores. And Mikey Sun wrote a great story. And the fact, again... Being included in this comic book is a privilege. I mean, the fact that, like, in the comic books that our likeness is going to be used in this and that whoever ends up playing us in this live-action series, I mean, they're going to be playing characters based on us. That is so exciting. And I thank you, Mikey Sun, so much. I mean, you you and Syl, we have a lot – we have you guys to really thank for us, us all meeting. And – you know, and Skywalker being part of this campaign, creating the soul hashtag, thankful for it all. Buy Dreamwalker, Second Skin Comics, follow the rules of engagement. It's not, the ha the old hashtags are always going to be remembered, but you got to stick with the new ones because that's how we want it to trend as much as possible, especially for 214 Day. We want 214 Day to trend as much as possible. Twitter recognizes two hashtags. So when we say to only use two, that's why. 
We can do it, people. I know we can. Can't we, Corey? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm excited about Dan. There's, uh, you know, we, we, we can we can work together and we can make this happen, but we're, we're going to need everybody's help on this one for sure. So please, guys, hashtag sell Zia Shale to Netflix, sell Snyderverse to Netflix. We can get Henry Cavill back. We can get Zack Snyder back. We can do it. I know we can. And lastly, have a fantastic day. day.